and welcome to a Heartbeat Alaska special. This year, the AFN Youth and Elders Conference concentrated on reawakening, on wellness. And we're bringing you several programs that illustrate that wellness and how the youth and elder are coming together for that one goal for all Native people. I'll be back with a fabulous show right after this. Hi, I'm Lisa Zam with Alaska Family Hospice, your home in the city. We would like to invite you to stay with Alaska Family, located right next to the Alaska Native Medical Center. We will have a new addition for our special prenatal guest, a beautiful prenatal home. Call to make your reservations. This fall and winter, every guest is entered in a very special drawing every week for gift certificates, and in December, a grand drawing. So the next time you're coming to Anchorage, stay with Alaska Family, your home in the city. Breaking through the cloud sheet. This year's Youth and Elder Conference invited speakers, speakers that have a heart to share wellness. And what is wellness? Well, it's something that we can all define, a place of hope, a place of beauty, a place of strength, a place of reawakening. Today's speakers speak to all those themes. You know, I think we're at a crossroads, uh, mostly for our young people here. And well over 50% of the kids that are in DFYS custody are Alaska Natives. I think they need to identify with their elders and where they, their background. They need to get back to their roots. You have a whole new generation of people uh, trying to deal with the issues and having some ideas and trying to move forward. And I think that's sort of what's really exciting about um, what's happening now. If somebody's on drugs, they look bad. I just want to tell them to stop. Just don't do it. So I just want to tell them. Stop doing that stuff. You want to start this campaign for wellness? Well, this is my prayer for you. Is that we will end the suffering of our children. Because they are truly our only hope. That no matter where we've been as parents, no matter what we've been through, no matter how hard it might get, that we'll determine on our own that we will no longer harbor abusing our children and neglecting them, that we will all work together as brothers and sisters and parents and elders to protect our children. That's our hope. Every village, every single village, if they want to, could end the suffering of our children. And that's where you begin. And you have to teach them these things. Children need to know what it means to be a human being. Our children are suffering from hopelessness and loneliness. That is not excusable. We have to work extremely hard to end the suffering that we've seen so much of. And it absolutely has to begin with the little kids. If you want to get the history of what went wrong, it starts at the beginning of human beings. But it doesn't help us get well. If I take this picture, I'm pretending it's made of glass, but if I took it made of glass and smashed it here, we could then write the story of how Father Michael broke the picture. And we can all do videotapes on that, and all of you can write your version. We saw it, we're all eyewitnesses. Father Michael smashed that picture. Look at how many pieces it broke into. Knowing how the picture got broken would not help you fix it. 
knowing how it got smashed doesn't help you put it back together. And someone who wasn't in the room when I broke it, we could give them all these pieces of glass and say, here, fix this. They'd have a hard time. Why would they have a hard time? Because they, they won't know what it was to start with. It's just a pile of broken glass. If we showed them a picture of the picture before it got broken, at least they'd have a clue what they were building. And even then, putting it back together would be a completely different process than breaking it. Now, I've been to a lot of wellness conferences the last five, 10 years. And you know what people talk about mostly, half the time or more? How did this picture get broken? We can talk about how things went wrong forever. And it makes feel, people feel angry, and we don't want to be angry. It makes people feel sad, and we don't want to be depressed. And it makes people feel guilty. We don't want to be filled with guilty either. None of those things are healthy. So let's stop talking about how things got broken and talk about how we can put it back together. Let's fix it. And Mr. Mr. Napoleon is absolutely right. We have the power to do it. I know right now there's hard times with our villages. I'm saying this and I'm acknowledging it to the young people because I know, as a chief, sometimes I have to deal with some of our own people when they drink too much or something, and they're fighting, or there's domestic violence. Or I know sometimes that younger people, you know, even myself, I was, I admit, you know, I was abused as a young kid. Not by my parents, but by some other people. That was hard for me to overcome. I felt bad and sad about it. But that's still happening in our villages. And so I'm just acknowledging the young people that I know. Some of the stuff when we talk about hope and wellness, and you go home and you say, but that's not what I'm seeing right here. I'm seeing a hard time. My people and my cousins crying. We still have these suicides and things. But all that stuff is the stuff that we're talking about that we need to stop. When people talk about breaking the cycle, that's the cycle we're talking about, breaking. We don't want to know more domestic violence. We don't want to know more alcohol and drug abuse in our villages. You know, we don't want that pain and suffering to continue to be passed on. And uh, that, that stopping of that cycle, that breaking of the cycle, is going to happen with all of you who are here right now in this room. Now, the last thing I'll say is that all what I said, the only way it's going to work is for all of us to maintain hope to accept the fact that, well, Alaska Natives are just beautiful. And uh, that we're going to make, carry ourselves forward with the strength, reawaken ourselves. But then we also have to do another thing. We've got to work together. Overcome, put our final goal of wellness, the goal. If I don't get all this person, I lose you care. Who cares? Our goal is for wellness for the younger people. Don't go away, we have some more of the Youth and Elder Conference right after this. I want to make sure that the natural resource development that happens in the state of Alaska benefits you. Alaska's workers, Alaska's businesses, Alaska's communities. I'm a 20-year member of the Operating Engineers, and I'm supporting Fran Almer for governor because she supports the working men and women of this state. She's tough. Yeah, she's tough. She's tough enough. We need Fran's leadership and we need it right now. As governor, I'll make development work for Alaskans. Gather your strength. Gather your strength. Gather together. Gather up families. Elders. Kids. Villages. It is time to come forward to plant new hope. To see the beauty within our people. To reawaken the spirit. It is a movement. It starts inside you and grows into healthy native villages. Join, Join the, the reawakening. reawakening. Visit NativeFederation.org and let the conversation begin. Youth and Elders Conference has something for everyone from speakers across the state of Alaska to dancers from around the world.
beauty within ourselves as Alaska Native people is that when we look at ourselves, um, we're able to see how how our heart is connected with our with ourselves and how we're able to promote and to be able to look at each other and recognize that we are a beautiful people for everything that we have been through for all the trauma the grief and sometimes we feel that shame and that hopelessness and that helplessness and we need to learn to be proud of who we are and, and Alaska Native people are a beautiful people very beautiful um, and the reawakening is what's bringing us to the point of being able to recognize the beauty within ourselves. For the indigenous people of the Hawaiian Islands, traditional songs and dance are used to preserve and perpetuate their culture, much the same way as we do in Alaska. These songs and dances from the island of Kauai have been performed for generations, being passed down from mother to daughter, father to son.
a sparsely populated peninsula, Kamchatka is about the same size as Japan. It's home to Russia's largest volcano belt, made up of 28 active craters that stretch along its shore. Today, the people of Kamchatka not only deal with surviving in a severely depressed economy, but are also faced with the fact that their land is now for sale by their government. Despite their hardships, the people of Kamchatka maintain a spirit of optimism for the future. That can be seen in their dance. dances from Kamchatka land, our native culture, it is uh, kind of kind of show presentation for the Alaska natives here in, in AFN conference of our traditional uh, cultural dances. And it was uh, imitation of uh, the animals and birds and fish, fi fi fishes here in Kamchatka. And because our people lives, live in, in love with nature. First of all, it is the, uh, the fighting for the rights for the land, because now in Russia it is uh, since uh, January the land will, uh, can be purchased uh, and our people are afraid our people are afraid that uh, our land can be purchased for, for others for somebody and you know we have a law with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, rights of indigenous people for the land, traditional use, for, for traditional use, but it do doesn't work in there right now because nobody understands, even government, even administration, local administration, and people, indigenous community, how to use this law. And that's maybe uh, just the most uh, difficult problem in my land. <laughs> Come on. 
I'm a storyteller and an actor and I guess public speaker and I travel around and, and, and do, you know, tell stories to like banquets or, or up here or I felt like I was being a storyteller back there which was good. I'm learning or I was told or I figured out by myself or I thought of, or an idea came out of the air and into my head is we are stories. Uh, we are stories. Not just we're told stories, we are stories. I mean, the stories that are being told now are a lot of, a lot of, a lot of hurtful stories, a lot of family problems, fetal alcohol syndrome, alcohol, you know, addiction. And those are, those are stories. Those are the stories, those are examples that a lot, a lot of kids have going on. What's our story? I want to start telling a story of healing. You know, I want to start telling a story of creation, not reaction to stimulation, addic not reaction to, reaction to addiction, not reaction to boredom, but just straight creation. I want to start telling this story of healing, of responding to all the things that hurt us. And there are a ton of things that hurt us, of responding to those things in a way that almost absorbs, you know, absorbs all it can take and then allows that part to heal. Yeah, I hear stories that, that are talk about the Ice Age, that talk about the flood. The, the power of the stories, it's like um, the old myths. I mean, there's a total reason, there's a total reason why they're told for thousands of years. Why they kept on, why it was, elders said it was so important, you need to know these stories. There's a, a, a real reason. Not because it's entertainment, not because it just satisfies you for a few seconds and then you want some more, but because it's a healthy, healing, creative example of living. And it, and it's, Sometimes even so, uh, so overwhelming, so uh, powerful that we don't understand it cognitively, but it's an image of a, a healthier way of living. When we find a problem, we su suggest a solution, we have a plan, what do we do? Network? Uh huh. What kind of story do you want to tell? Do you want to tell a story of health? Of, um, a good, joyful story, a strong story, respectful story, or do you want to tell a story of tragedy, of loss, of hurt, of death, victimization, you know, alcoholism, any of those things. All I do is I tell stories, and I hope people could give it back, give that off to someone else. It's a give, it's, you know, it's, it's not so people will come back to me. It's not so I could give them a, a rush. It's something that they can give back on the other people. You're as rich as how much you give. That's what I'm learning. I'm just learning this. You know, you're as rich as something that you give.
stands out is the um, is the students and the and the people really getting into their culture, really take really taking part and caring about it. There's so many different kind of people here. I see Hawaiians from Hawaii and Russians and. I see all kinds of people. It's pretty cool with all the indig indigenous people coming together and trying to make this place a better place, and I really like it. It's just wonderful to see all our people all in one place instead of seeing just white people everywhere. Uh, we know that our elders have a wisdom that we're able to survive such harsh environment, not only weather-wise, but in the shock of coming to an urban community. And now that the resources are here at AFM, we can start taking more control of how we uh, heal ourselves. Together we can, and together we will bring about wellness for Alaska Native people. Thank you so much for joining us for the first of a series of programs on the Youth and Elders Conference held recently here in Anchorage, Alaska and sponsored by AFN. Don't go away. Following this program, there are more wonderful highlights from this year's AFN convention held in Anchorage, Alaska. And that's right on Heartbeat, Alaska. So I'll be right back. I hope you will be too. God bless you and we'll see you in a few minutes. Oh, yeah.